Now, if you are a PCOS sister and you've gone to a doctor, you must have definitely heard one of these two lines that is take less stress and lose some weight. I mean, if it was really that easy, would I really be coming to you? Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. This video is different from my usual makeup content. We are talking a little bit about lifestyle in this video and this is like the title already says my weight loss journey but it's not just my weight loss journey it's my weight loss journey with PCOS that is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if you've clicked on this video it's probably because you are dealing with the same symptoms and the same issues that I went through so this video is really really going to help you because I've compiled everything that I've learned with PCOS in the past four years and put it in this video so it's exactly Exactly what you need to know about PCOS, about losing weight, about hormonal acne, about hair loss and every other symptom associated with it. So if this is the first time that you've come onto my channel then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and join the Sarah squad and also click on the bell icon right next to it so that you're notified every Thursday and Sunday when I put up a new video. So now just let's start with a little bit of insight into what exactly your symptoms will look like if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now a syndrome is basically a collection of symptoms, a collection of uh, disorders that you have. It's not just one thing. So you could probably have hormonal acne the way I did, the cystic acne. You could have profuse hair fall because of the hormonal imbalance. You can have irregular menstrual cycles and you can also have a lot of weight gain which you cannot necessarily attribute to any other thing like you might say that I'm eating the same amount that I've done since so many years I'm still exercising the way I always did but I don't happen to lose any weight so if these are your symptoms apart from getting your thyroid checked and any other blood test that you might have to do you should also get your PCOS profile tested now this can only happen if you go to a gynecologist or a dermatologist the name of the blood test is called PCOS profile 2 which consists of a variety of blood tests like it's a whole bunch of blood tests which is everything right from your testosterone levels to your FSH, LH, your thyroid, your um, insulin everything is tested in that one profile so if you've never gotten yourself checked and you just think that you have PCOS but you're not sure about it it's necessary that you go to a doctor and take it from there because you also have to get an ultrasound and all of that does require a prescription now having said that since I've been battling PCOS since 2016 I was diagnosed when I was 17. I was in my 12th grade. This is what I looked like when I was 17 and I was in my 12th grade. I had profuse, profuse cystic acne on my face. My face was filled with acne. I had gained a lot of weight in a very short amount of time. I went from being about 70 kgs to all the way up to 90 kgs in just a matter of one year. So my entire journey started because of my acne. My acne was very bad and so I had to go to a dermat to get it treated. And in the process of my treatment, we went ahead and did those tests and realized that my hormones were totally out of whack. So this was a little bit of insight into my journey and my experience with PCOS. Now let's talk about the tips that I have for you guys that I have very well experienced, experimented and come down to that has been working for me and I'm definite that if you try all of this it will work for you as well. Having lost 15 kgs over 4 years, I'm not going to say that I've drastically lost 15 kgs in 6 months, that is not the truth. Now the first thing I realized that you have to give up on crash dieting. Now crash dieting is all these keto and GM motor diet and Atkins and all of this that you hear on the internet which makes you lose weight super fast, super quick. In two weeks you'll be losing 10 kgs and it sounds really exciting but it does not work. I have tried it myself and it's partly the reason that I ended up gaining so much weight because you can do those diets for two weeks, you can do those diets for three weeks also if you have a lot of self-control but you will give up someday and on the fourth week when you give up you're going to end up gaining twice the amount of weight that you lost in the first two weeks so that's terrible. Also you're messing up with your metabolism big time. You're really confusing your hormones and your metabolism as to what you're eating and what you're binging on and so your body is in a total bizarre mindset like your organs must be thinking that what is wrong with this person for one week she just had 
soup and she just had water and she just had a juice diet and the next week she's eating pizzas and burgers and how is your body supposed to cope with that so it will not cope very well and it will not metabolize the fat very well leading to your fat just getting deposited and not getting metabolized properly hence causing a lot of extra weight gain so first thing you have to stop crash dieting so now you will ask me that if you're not crash dieting then what exactly should you do for a diet and now for that let's dive into point number two and that is the dairy free lifestyle now this i am very happy to share with you all is the main reason why i could cure my hormonal acne it's the main reason why i have lost so much weight it's the main reason i feel healthier i feel happier i feel less bloated because i have stopped consuming dairy now the main thing that happens with dairy products that is your cow's milk your dahi your paneer and your cream and malai and all of that is that they pump a lot of hormones into the buffaloes and into the cows that produce the milk and then when you get that milk you are pumping those hormones into your body so your hormones which are already out of whack are getting those excessive female reproductive hormones and are completely going bizarre into your body so for that very reason when i learned that fact i realized that it's time that i take this big step and stop consuming dairy now let me tell you that i am a non vegetarian so i do consume chicken i do consume mutton and i do consume other meats and i know that there are hormones in those meats as well but that has not been reacting with me and i have seen personally in my life that there are a lot of vegetarian friends of mine as well who do have a lot of pcos symptoms and have hormonal acne and all of that so if they are not consuming meat it's probably just the dairy which is reacting with them now if i sit to talk about all the alternatives that i am picking for uh, instead of cow's milk and instead of paneer and dahi this will be a 2 hour long video so if you want me to share about the entire dairy free journey with an indian diet then let me know in the comments and i will do a separate video on the dairy free alternatives that i personally choose but yeah that is a main main reason why i could battle my pcos symptoms without any medication without any other external things just cut out dairy just get up one fine day and tell yourself that you're not going to consume any more dairy and i know it's easier said than done it's not going to happen overnight but you have to start taking smaller steps and then build yourself up there if you've seen my ramzan vlog i was still eating malai i was eating cheese and i was eating stuff that time but that is because i was still on my medication today alhamdulillah i have stopped all medications and i am able to cope with this lifestyle only because i have gone dairy free now about medicines i'm going to tell you at the end of this video so you stay tuned for that till the end of this video so if you're going to cut down dairy you're automatically not going to consume pizza and burgers and that's a win win situation which is going to really help you lose weight along with eliminating dairy i also try to eliminate sugar and try replacements of sugar so like not those sugar free which you get for diabetes not that but like wherever i can put like honey i try to put honey like in my morning breakfast with oats i put a spoon of honey uh, when i'm making my coffee or tea i put jaggery instead of putting refined sugar like if you're having dal take a big vati of dal and eat it all by itself instead of just pouring it over rice and eat bhaji with roti so these are the healthier choices that you will make try to consume more protein because it will help with your muscle mass building faster it's all about serving yourself what's made at home but serving it in the right way like i can very well see two plates of food where i am putting one big dollop of rice and taking very little sabzi as opposed to what i do now is take like only two spoonfuls of rice a big bowl of dal and a lot of sabzi to have plain and maybe one roti to have with that sabzi so this is a healthy plate of food the same very plate which is made at home i'm eating it differently and that difference is helping with the results So now if you can't go completely dairy free reducing the amount of dairy you have will also help you like i'm at a stage in life that if i have a complete bowl of dahi then i'm going to break out the very next day break out in the form that i have red inflammation and a lot of pus filled acne on my face and i feel very bloated and feel very bad in my body but if i have just a small teeny tiny piece of chocolate which has probably milk in it then nothing happens to me like i have no symptoms but if you're going to go ahead and have a full cake by yourself then that's not really helping so now with that i come to point number 3 and that is don't deprive yourself of anything eat everything in moderation and why i say that is because if you go on a specific diet that does not involve sugar that does not involve 
chocolates that does not involve carbs that are you know some, something that you're really really loving and you stop having it how long will you do that there will be some day that you will be really stressed and you will then really strongly crave that piece of pizza that you didn't have or that piece of samosa that you didn't get and then suddenly you're finding yourself eating the entire plate of samosa and the entire pizza all by yourself and that is not healthy so if you're like eating small amounts of what you love every single day you will never really crave it and you will never really tell yourself that you know i didn't eat it that day so aaj main pura kha sakti hu aisa nahi hota hai if there's a big piece of cake in your fridge every day you can have like a small thin slice of it and eat it slowly and really devour that chocolate and the creaminess that's coming from the cake so that you feel satisfied not just in your stomach but also in your heart and that is really a very healthy coping mechanism like taking a small piece but really enjoying it and feeling ke ha kuch khaya like kabhi kabhi we just take a big piece of pizza and we just hogging hogging watching tv and hogging and not realizing kabhi pura pizza khatam ho gaya and it's all gone in your body and really you can't do anything about it so be more mindful about what you're eating be more cautious about what you're putting into your body look at your food admire it if you will just don't take photos but also feel the taste of that food and like really satisfy your mind with what you're eating and honestly it will make a difference to the way you are consuming your food so that also brings me to my fourth point and that is to slowly and steadily reduce portion sizes now a lot of my friends who suffer from pcos also say that it's difficult for them to lose weight because they consume a lot of rice a lot of chapatis a lot of everything so their portion sizes are very big and that is really not a problem you can slowly and gradually reduce your portion size i always tell them that it's better to eat how much your body wants rather than to eat less and then again and again keep going in the kitchen and snacking on small small things to fill yourself up so it's better that you eat your three meals a day or your four meals a day in the amounts that your body is used to so this reducing portion sizes never really happens overnight you can't just get up tomorrow and say i'm going to have half a plate of rice that i usually have or have just one chapati than having my three chapatis so that's not how it works like you can start with one meal a day and i advise that that meal may be dinner because after that you're probably just going to be on your phone and go to sleep after dinner you're not doing a lot of work So you can start cutting your portion sizes with dinner. If you're having two chapatis for dinner, you can make it one for this week, for maybe the next week as well, and then the week after that you can start making cuts on your sham ka nashta. Like if you have sham ka nashta, I used to personally have a lot of sandwiches and a lot of bhel and chaat and all of this in the evening snacks, which I've totally cut it down to. Now I just have like black coffee and thoda seeing or chana in the evening. So like slowly and gradually you go one meal at a time and cut things down, and you will realize that you're throughout the day eating very less. as compared to what you previously ate and you're still feeling very full and satisfied so this doesn't happen overnight it has to be a gradual process so you slowly and steadily work on it now coming to point number 5 is something very important and that is to maintain a food diary and this can be very easily done right now because we are very free in life so you can maintain a food diary where you write every single thing that you ate throughout the day right from breakfast to dinner even if you're eating chocolates in between write it and also the exercise you get in the day if you're working out write that as well and if you feel that you did very well throughout the day then compliment yourself as well at the end of the day i will show you i maintain a diary at all times i am having a diary right now with me to talk to you all as well i'm a big time writer i have so many diaries all over and i need to note things down if they come to my mind so really writing it and putting it on a piece of paper tells you how much you've progressed and how well you're doing and if some day suppose like how you're going dairy free in life and if you eat in a piece of cheese just circle it with a red pen or just circle it over there so you know ki aaj maine cheese khaya to kal i will try to not eat the same thing and not make the same mistake again now coming on to point number 6 and that is workouts now exercise is like very easier said than done you just say that you know if you work out you're going to lose weight but that's not about it for pcos you don't have to just work out you have to do more of large weighted muscle workout now what do i mean by that is that you use your larger muscles like your thighs your glutes your hamstrings and work them more yeah, like your leg workouts you know so if you're dealing with pcos try to do more of lower body workouts because those are the bigger muscles of your body and not just that if you have weights in your house slowly and steadily try to lift weights as well initially if you've never worked out it's going to be difficult for you to like lift weights because your arms are not that strong 
but uh, gradually as you start working out you will be able to lift weights so what happens with that is that your larger muscles are going to metabolize the fat better they help you balance your hormones better than doing those fast paced cardios and running on the treadmill for 40 minutes is not really going to help you so with that i also want to come on to point number seven and that is having realistic weight and body goals and talking the right body language when you're talking to yourself when you're looking at yourself in the mirror when you look at your body stop telling yourself that you're ugly stop telling yourself that you're fat and, and you will never be able to like be healthy again just stop with that negative attitude and start looking at yourself as a curvy person that you are thick but you are beautiful and if you speak the right language to your body your body will reward you you will feel better and when you feel better you want to do better things for your body don't body shame yourself let, let others body shame you if they can't mind their own business they, that's their issue it's not really your problem you mind your own business and you see your own body and realize that you are beautiful the way you are and if you want to get healthier you're doing it for yourself so keeping that in mind also have realistic goals now realistic goals means like don't keep like suppose i was 90 kgs if i would have told myself that time which i did that i want to turn 75 the very next month for my birthday that's not possible let's just be real it's not going to happen but there are videos and things on the internet that tell you that it is possible you can lose 15 kgs and that's when you get lured into these very fast paced workouts and very fast paced unhealthy diets which are not good for you so have realistic goals just tell yourself weigh yourself every once a week or once in two weeks or take the measure of your inches and your waist so you can account yourself for seeing the results which will help you and motivate you better but just know that your ideal body weight is supposed for me it's 75 i was 90 that someday i'm going to consistently work in this manner and reach that 75 now coming to the last last point of this i think very long video it's the point number eight and that is taking medication now uh, with PCOS the medicines that doctors give you is contraceptives they give you OC pills that is oral contraceptive and uh, these are those you know 21 day tablets that you take basically for birth control uh, but what they help you do is also balance your hormones because with birth control you will get your cycle very regularly you will get it in the like you take those tablets for 21 days you take a break of four days and you get your period on the fifth day then once again you take those tablets i have personally taken those tablets for a matter of three years now and it's just recently that i have been able to wave off those tablets and start this independent lifestyle of my own so that's why i'm that confident today to talk to you all about it in my previous hormonal acne video i could not talk to you all and tell you all when i stopped this medicine i just told you all go to a dog now with these medicines what happens is that uh, there is a lot of myth surrounding it a lot of people think that taking birth control is not good at all it's not that bad see these birth controls which your doctors will give you are very low dose birth controls they have a very low dose of hormones in them but the thing is they are very symptomatic treatment like up here so up your hormones will be in balance but the minute you stop it you're again going to have hair fall you're again going to have hormonal acne you will again have problem in losing weight so it's a very temporary thing you can't be doing it for a lifetime but if you're dealing with very severe severe uh, PCOS symptoms then I do recommend that you go to a doctor and get yourself the medicines that the doctor prescribes you don't some say say that give me birth control let the doctor check you and tell you what is to be given and if they do give you birth control take it for the matter of six seven eight months even but realize that while you're doing that you have to make all of these six point changes that I told you cut out your junk you have to try to go dairy free or reduce your dairy intake you have to work out you have to do all of that because these pills will help you lose weight effectively like they will balance your hormones out for you automatically and so when you work out so when you eat healthy you will lose weight much faster as compared to if you just make these lifestyle changes and try to lose weight it will take more time as compared to if you do it with medicines like are you able to understand like your medicines will basically accelerate your weight loss they will help you get better faster that's the whole point of them but you cannot be taking them lifelong now the way i did i took them for three years please don't do the same mistake as me i made those mistakes because there was nobody to guide me correctly nobody ever told me what the side effects would be what 
the, the thing would be the doctors just keep on putting you on the pill they keep on telling you to take it till your acne totally subsides and there was no one to guide me my mom has never really taken all these pills she never really had PCOS so she didn't have to deal with all this but I am telling you with my experience that if you're doing it then try to make these lifestyle changes and gradually waver off those medicines the doctors can tell you to continue it for lifelong but it's not the healthiest thing to do I personally did not have any side effects with the medicines try to make these seven lifestyle changes that I told you all first if they are not working for you at all then you try to go on medicine and make these changes and then see the results and then slowly gradually waver off the medicines like I have done so this was my PCOS weight loss journey all in one video everything that I've done everything that I've experimented in the past four years uh, that have helped me today to have better skin to have better hair and to have a fitter body is a, is a part of this video I've kept it very raw and clear and tried to explain in very simple terms to you guys so try to make notes and try to abide by these slowly and steadily. Nothing's gonna happen overnight. You really have to do and put in the work to get the results. So if you want to see the results, this is my before and this is my after. This is what I look like now and this is what I looked like then. And I love my body even then. I love my body even now. So it's very important that you love yourself no matter who loves you or no. So that's going to help you and really guide you in the right direction. I hope this video helped you guys. If you have any questions, at all then I recommend that you leave them in the comments if I get a lot of questions I will consider doing a part two of this video to answer your questions properly about my dairy free journey if I get a good response then I will make a dedicated video for that as well for this video I hope you guys learned a lot and got a lot of correct insight into PCOS and how to tackle it the right way if you did then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and also share this video with your friends who are also battling PCOS so you can help them and guide them in the right direction. For today's video, the Sara Squad shout out goes to Naz Khan. Thank you so much Naz for watching. If you want to be a part of next week's Sara Squad shout out, then all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon right next to it and leave a comment down with the hashtag Sara Squad and you'll get a chance to be a part of next video's Sara Squad shout out. Until then, stay home, stay safe and be positive. Bye guys, love you all.